We thank God for you and your family, and we are grateful to have you on Gift Our Church platform. May God be good to you as you invest in the hearing of the word. Now, let's get into the word from Pastor Kwame. The psalmist said, As the day panned for the water, so my soul long after thee. You alone am a hard desire, and I long to worship you. Amen. There is this need to begin to uh, fill yourself with the presence of the Lord. Amen. Moses said, If your presence does not go with us, we are not moving an inch. And I believe that as the day comes forth, you want to yearn for his presence. You want to want, you want, to want more of him. You want to have this kind of uh, affinity for his presence. Amen. Father, this hour we want to say that you are the reason that we are alive today you are the reason that we live today in you that we actually live in you that we move and have our very being and so we want to honor you for this day and want to thank you for your presence that is with us and we want to thank you that in the name of jesus we can access your presence in the name of jesus we can receive what we ask for the bible says if we ask anything and do not doubt and believe in our hearts we will receive what we ask for so on behalf of those that are connected with me today father we ask for your protection we ask for your kindness we ask for your forgiveness and we ask for your goodness in jesus mind to name amen and amen let me get to work praise be to god amen it's a delight to bring you the word of god amen i get excited to just open the word of god and speak the mind of god in a very small way to you praise be to god i have a very fancy um verse here amen and as you can see from even the the, the scripture picture is very interesting here and the book is also interesting in the book of songs of solomon chapter one the division 10 the bible says now earrings are to your beauty and and it says now and you wear necklace of precious stones earrings are to your beauty and you wear necklace of precious stones amen don't panic at all it has nothing to do with love today i want to talk about the power of your words the power of your words amen amen but definitely because it's my responsibility to also educate us on biblical truth as always important and significant that i start talking about the book that the verse is coming from and kind of paint the context so obviously a lot of people don't preach from the book of psalms of solomon but it's purely a romantic book and some believe it is about jesus christ but trust me i don't see that that much it's about a love between a man and a woman and solomon was a lover he had so many girlfriends and wives so he it was i guess right that he writes book about love and so this let me give you a little bit of literature as well so the songs of solomon is a song pretty much it's a love song and it's broken into verses and parts that people sing and in chapter one for instance it starts with the woman or the bride singing and then the bridal party responds which in the bible we call it the daughters of jerusalem they respond and then the man begins to sing so in chapter in chapter one verse 10 the man starts singing these lyrics and it's interesting that different translation translate it differently but the picture god showed me to come and teach you is where i get this verse from it says now your earrings are to your beauty and 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 you wear a necklace of precious stones so um it's a, it's, it's a beautiful thing to say to a woman that you love. It's a beautiful thing to express yourself to the woman that you love. But on the face value, this is just being nice to a person. This is just complimenting a woman, which they like a lot to, to compliment. So I have to do justice to the verse by saying that compliment your wife, compliment your girlfriends, compliment your daughters, compliment women, because it is good thing for them to hear. All right. But that has nothing to do with what the Lord wants me to share with you on today. So after we get through with the surface meaning, which is complimenting a woman for how awesome they look, I want to talk about the power of your words, which is also applicable to the fact that if you speak well to a woman, if you speak well to your mother, if you speak well to a female, you actually get a better response. Knowing how to talk to a woman is a whole class on its own, but that's really not what I want to talk about today. The Spirit of the Lord is leading me to talk to you about the power of your words, the power of your words. And I hope I don't take too long of your time. Now, the first thing you see, so I want you to look at this as a template, as a picture to for me to extract this truth from it. Now, the, 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 the songwriter is connecting the ear of the woman to the neck of the woman. 
Now, that's the link I want to create for us today. The ear of the woman. And this is purely, and the verse is purely pictorial. It's a picture. He's just saying that the necklace looks, and she's actually going to describe her from the top of the head right to the, the feet. So, she's going to be describing how she looks, how her, her body looks and all of that. She's going to describe that. But the, the, the way God created us brings a very deep truth to what I want to teach on today. So, the first thing I want you to see to build the foundation of what God wants me to teach you is the fact that the, 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 your, your, your ear and your neck has a connection. And he just said it in passing, but I want to teach that so bad today. So, stay with me as I get a little deeper. The first thing I want you to understand is the power of your words will determine the kind of yoke that you are under. Amen. So, your words determine. So, let me make some bold statement and then let me get back and now add some flesh to what I'm saying. First thing I want you to take home today is the fact that the things that you say will determine the kind of life you live. So, your hearing, what you hear, to what, what, what you hear or what you speak to your own hearing is connected to your neck. And when I talk about your ear, I'm talking about the things, information you receive, the things you say to yourself. And when I talk about your neck, I'm talking about the kind of life you are living. Your neck represents the yoke, the yoke of bondage you are under. Your neck represents uh, the weight you are under. So spiritually, the neck part represents the fact that why that? Because when you have a yoke, when you have, a yoke pretty much is a bondage. A yoke pretty much is a, a life of um, difficulty, a life of restriction, and a life of limitation. And that is representing your neck and your ear represent the words you hear. So there's a connection between your words and your yoke. Are you now following me? So it is important and significant that you understand that the words you speak will determine how light or easy your yoke is. The Bible says, take my yoke, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Based on the word of God, the yoke is defined. So your speech is connected to the yoke of your life. If you speak curses, chances are there's a curse around your neck. If you speak blessings, chances are there's a blessings around your neck. So I just want to make that connection between what you are hearing and what is around your neck. As the, 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 the lover boy was saying to the, the to the girlfriend here. So that is very important. Now let me step back and now talk to you again on some practical things. I know personally my life and the life of most of the people on this line it's a life of real struggle we've not had life easy we are not born on the, the the best part of town we have seen many troubled days and difficult times and disappointment and hardship and sickness and problems and financial limitations of all kinds and therefore that has shaped who we are and you cannot deny the fact that life is hard for you. But the problem is that if you speak what you have experienced, you create a perpetual necklace called the necklace of bondage. And so the Lord will me tell you to intentionally learn a new language. You can never prosper if you don't speak about prosperity. Let me give you a, 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 life, a real life example. I'm not very good as a, a sound engineer, but a bunch of African American guys found my CD and they called me to Harlem to help them record their first project. So I carried all my equipment to their house to record for them. And these guys had no money. They couldn't even pay me. But I listened to every lyric they were singing. It was a rap group. And every word they were singing was, we have money, we are going to this. Everything was... A, 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 and so I stopped one of the rappers. I said, why do you guys speak like you have a lot? He says, you cannot have it unless you speak it. And I said, Amen. And they started laughing. They said, Pastor, don't bring your Amen over here. So what I'm trying to say is that it is impossible for you to break out of your life if your speaking is connected to what you are living. If you speak what you want, you have it. But if you speak what you're going through, you will stay in what you're going through. Your speech, oh God, help us. Your speech is connected to your neck. Are you hearing me? And, and it, it is not easy to, to live a poor life and speak a rich life. It is not easy to live a difficult life and speak a good life. 
because out of the abundance of the heart is what the mouth will speak and what your heart have experienced or what you say it is very very difficult to say that men are good when you have been disappointed by men but unless you say men are good you will never have a good man in your life it is difficult for you to trust people it's very difficult for you to believe in even prophets and so-called men of god but unless you say i believe in a prophet you your prophecy will never come to pass so you must train your lips to speak because your lips is creating your necklace what you are saying is connected to your yoke and so i came to let you understand that do your best you know and 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 do your best and it, it's not easy but try t- to feed your mind with words that are con- the Bible said, let the weak say i am strong he says let the weak say i am strong that means that the weak must not say what they are going through the weak must say what they want uh, the bible said, out of your mouth you shall be justified or condemned and so i came to let you understand that the power of your words will determine the yoke on your neck what you say say is what you're going to put on and so anybody whose life is difficult chances are you speak your reality chances are you speak what you're going through and it is very 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 funny and very interesting that if you keep it real people say i like this guy he keeps it real if you keep it real your life will be real you have to keep it faith so your life can change and so i came to encourage you to speak life speak life speak life speak healing speak prosperity speak marriage speak faith speak the will of god hallelujah let me finalize it by saying the Bible says, uh, God will never show you a valley of fresh bones. God will never show you a valley of beautiful bones. God will always show you a valley of dry bones that look very bad, that look very dry, and you are supposed to speak to the dry bones. We're supposed to speak to the dry bones. So I want you to understand that the Bible, let me, let me finish because I can teach this to the cows come home. The Bible says when God created the heavens and the earth, there was a darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and there was total chaos and darkness and, and utter, utter confusion. But the Bible said God opened up his mouth and said, let there be light. And the scripture says instantly light appeared from nowhere. And that became the order of life. That until you speak something, you are not going to have it. Jesus said, lies was come for. In the beginning was a word. The word was with God. The word was God. Nothing that was made was made. Your tomorrow is shaped by your words. Your future is shaped by your words. And I'm not just talking about your words. I'm talking about your, your, your conversation. Because some of you are obviously in a faith-based church where before you leave Sunday, they will tell you, declare I am the righteousness of God. Declare I can do all things. And you find somebody who come and stand in front of you with a microphone and sweat and tell you to declare things and you declare it and you walk out. My dear, two hours of declaring cannot take care of a 24-hour life. It must be a part and parcel of how you talk. And it's not easy because we fall back to our default. We speak what we, we people tell us. We speak what is happening. We speak the problems of our lives. But I came to let you understand that your words are connected to your neck. What you say is what you wear. Your earrings makes you beautiful. Your necklace is made of pearl. Forget about necklace and forget about earrings. I'm talking about the ear and the neck. You are going to have what you say. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak into this, this, this atmosphere that words of encouragement, words of truth will fill the heart of your people. That they will look into every bad condition, every bad relationship, every bad job, every bad family and speak life into it. And turn things around in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.